Let me get your comments. Uh, the, the Premier is saying we can deal with this rise, but still pretty concerning. Yeah, it is concerning. To be honest, I'm very uneasy right now. Look, we talked a while ago uh, about my uh, original home country, Switzerland, you know, that things moved back to normal and then things were uh, really exploding. Um, that's what we're seeing here right now, too. I think one of the challenges was when these mask mandates were lifted and they, as you know, they were lifted early. We didn't have the data to support that. There was no communication that said, OK, we continue to strongly recommend masks. It was more like it's your choice. And, you know, people are listening. And what we're seeing just now is that a lot of people just have dropped their masks now and we have a dramatically changed behavior. And therefore, we will continue now to see our hospital uh, occupancy going up. Where I agree with the I Premier is that the, the uh, ICU will be less affected when we look also at this internationally and based you know, on what we know. But we need to be aware of there is no way we could ramp up to 3,000 ICU beds because we don't have the staff. You know, we can be lucky if we have 1,800 to 1,900 ICU beds in this province. No way we could go to 3,000. And aren't we then also running the risk of even more um, surgical backlogs, potentially? Uh, we already see that in some hospitals, that they start cancelling um, because they do, are not able to deal with what's coming already right now. Also remember, you know, right now, it's we probably are having already the highest number of infections daily ever in the pandemic. Luckily, because of the wall of immunity, less people will end up in our hospitals. But we talked about numbers games before. They still hold. We will continue to go up. And there's another aspect. You know, there's this little wrinkle that people tend to forget, which is if we see, as is the case right now, perhaps about one in 20 Ontarians being infected, having an active infection right now, this also holds for hospital staff, meaning the challenges in the hospital will continue to become more pronounced when numbers go up because hospital staff is also knocked out by COVID. And isn't it also true that we could expect to see more variants and um, I, looking at the, I guess they're calling it right now, the XE variant that was discovered um, in the UK and, and, and that being part of living with this COVID is that the, you know, we could see more subvariants? Um, we will see what's happening. XE is a, recom a recombinant, you know, between uh, two different subvariants. Um, of course, these sorts of things are expected and they will happen. It's, you know, we need to be aware of that. Um, China and Shanghai, for example, shows us you can't suppress Omicron. Neither BA1 first, now uh, BA2 you can't either. We need to find a way. The problem is just right now, you know, we don't have communication that makes very clear, okay, we need to ride out this wave now. Please mask up everybody. We need a few more weeks. We need that for the sake of our hospitals. We need that for the sake of the most vulnerable in our community. We have a lot of people out there who have less strong an immune system than you or I, for example. No. And, and uh, we also just would like to avoid, you know, that we have unnecessary deaths. And if we create a tidal wave, we have a tidal wave now, and this tidal wave is too high, uh, this means that we overshoot with infections, we will have unnecessary infections and unnecessary burden of disease. Okay. Dr. Peter Uni, thank you once again for joining us.